How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, we take a look at what's new in iOS 14.6 Beta 3. So iOS 14.6 Developer Beta 3 was released earlier today. And although it is not a gargantuan release by any stretch of the imagination, there are several things worth discussing in this video. So you see here I'm running 14.6 Developer Beta 3 with build number 18F5065A. So here are the release notes for 14.6 Beta 3. And as you can see in this release, it fixes an issue that caused the iPhone to experience reduced performance during startup. And I think this was occurring with some of the older compatible iPhones out there. And of course, 14.6 introduces the ability to update your iOS or iPadOS release to the latest RC or release candidate without removing the beta profile. So after updating to the release candidate, you can go ahead and jump to the next beta if you wish to do so. Now here, this of course isn't the release candidate as you can see under software update, but I did show you what this looks like in our iOS 14.5 overview. If you haven't seen that, make sure you click the link here to view that. But as you can see, you see also available right there at the bottom of software update. So what this basically means is that you can jump to the release candidate, but still maintain or still keep your beta profile so that you can jump back to the beta train without having to go back to Apple's developer website, download that beta profile, reinstall that beta profile. Obviously not a huge thing, right? But this feature does add a lot of convenience to those that run betas regularly. Now, speaking of iOS 14.5, Apple has stopped signing 14.5. So the earliest version of iOS 14 that you can upgrade or downgrade to is 14.5.1. And of course, that release introduced several fixes, including a fix for an exploit found in WebKit. So definitely something I recommend upgrading to if you haven't already, 14.5.1. And of course, 14.5.1 was released back on May 3rd, and Apple issued a note basically outlining some of the fixes including patching some notable flaws that could lead to arbitrary code execution. So in its support documents, Apple detailed these web flaws that they fixed, one involving memory corruption and another involving integer overflow. So both with the potential to execute arbitrary code, which obviously isn't a good thing. So Apple released that update and obviously they don't want people upgrading or downgrading to anything earlier than 14.5.1. And also this update supposedly fixes an issue with the app tracking transparency feature where people weren't able to enable it, although there's still some mixed reports on that. Now, Apple has also released the iOS 14.6 beta 3 update for public beta users as well. So not just developers, but now public beta users can now download 14.6 beta 3 and 14.6 likely includes new features in the Apple Podcast app for the podcast subscriptions platform, as well as support for the upcoming Apple Card family features. Now, in 14.5, Apple, of course, started enforcing app tracking privacy, which we walked through in depth on our 14.5 overview. But now you see a new splash page here for the App Store, informing users about the app privacy details found within the individual app pages on the app store. Now, if you go into settings and go to privacy and go to tracking, there you'll find the ability to basically disable app tracking if you want to. And again, if you'd like to see more in-depth details about the app tracking and what it does, how to enable it, how to disable it, all that jazz, you can head over and watch our 14.5 overview where we go super in-depth about pretty much everything new in 14.5. But as you can see, you can allow apps to request to track or you can outright block all apps globally or you can enable individual apps on an app by app basis as well. And then you can learn all about tracking in this little popover menu where Apple does a pretty good job of explaining what tracking is and what it is not. So definitely check that out if you want more details. Now, of course, 14.5 brought forth support for the Apple AirTag, but there is something new in beta three for 14.6 related to Find My and by extension, the AirTag. So here you can see there's a new option to leave your email address as a means to contact you 
when you've placed your AirTag or other Find My compatible device into lost mode. So say you put it in lost mode, normally you would just put your phone number in here, but now you have this option here to use an email address and it'll pre-populate your iCloud email address or your Apple ID account email address. But I put and updated my own email address there as you can see. And as you can see below that, this item has been lost. Please not call me, but email me. So just go ahead and activate lost mode like that. So now when someone finds your item and they want to contact you, it's going to give in theory your email address instead of your phone number, but it's not all quite fully baked yet. So what I have found is that when I actually found or try to identify the owner of this air tag, it does say the item has been lost indicating it's in lost mode. Please email me, but you'll notice something missing here. <laughs> there's, no, there's no email address. So uh, yeah, that's an issue. Obviously this is still beta though. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Normally you would have your phone number there uh, if you enable lost mode and have your phone number. And as you can see, it does actually list the phone number. You can just tap it and, and dial that number just like that. Hopefully in the future, you'll be able to include both the phone number and email address as a means to contact. But as of now, it's either one or the other. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been an overview of 14.6. If you appreciate this video, leave me a thumbs up. If you like more videos like this, then be sure to subscribe to 9to5Mac for more. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.